Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Brad Yates. Brad is known internationally for his creative and often humorous use of the emotional freedom techniques, EFT, otherwise known as tapping, and that's how I found him in the first place. He's an author of the best-selling children's book, The Wizard's Wish, the co-author of the bestseller Freedom at Your Fingertips, and a featured expert in the film The Tapping Solution. Brad has also been a presenter at numerous events, including Jack Canfield's Breakthrough to Success, has done teleseminars with the secret stars Bob Doyle and Dr. Joe Vitale. Now, he has over a thousand YouTube videos of himself tapping for pretty much every single mental health thing you could think of. And in this episode, Brad and I are going to chat about releasing resistance, self-sabotage, preventing stressful emotions from hijacking your health and really your aspirations in life. And gosh, I'm excited about this one because I'm a huge fan of Brad. So let's introduce you to Brad Yates, EFT tapping and tapping into your best self. All right, let's get on with the podcast. Hey, health junkies. I can't contain my excitement anymore because I get to tap with Brad today, which holy cow, has been a dream of mine for, I'd say, probably three years since I found Brad. And so today we're going to be talking all about emotional freedom technique, aka tapping, and how Brad got to this and also how we can become our own best selves using EFT tapping. So Brad, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. Thanks so much, Gina. I'm happy to be here with you. Man. You have no idea. This is like, this is dream come true for me right here. So of course, you know, I love to start off my podcast on, on the always question of like tapping. How did you get into it? What brought you to it? I mean, we talked about clown college, which don't worry, we're going to get to that too, (laughs) but I want to know about tapping. What brought you to tapping? Yeah. How does a grown man find himself tapping on his face for a living? I, yeah. So I actually started out as an actor and I had traveled the world doing theater went to Hollywood to be a movie star, as one does. And while I was there, I met a woman, fell in love and got married. And uh, when our first child was on the way, I thought, you know, I might need a backup career to support my family. (laughs) So I saw an ad for hypnotherapy school, and I'd always been fascinated by the power of the mind. So I signed up and went through that and started building a small hypnotherapy practice while still pursuing my acting career. And then after a couple of years, when our second child was on the way, it occurred to me that as much as I loved acting, personal development work was my calling. It's like this, this fulfills me in a a whole different way. And we left Los Angeles and moved to Northern California to be closer to our parents and have the kids close to their grandparents. And through some other hypnotherapists, I heard about this, this energy psychology conference going on in Las Vegas. And this guy doing this thing called EFT, where he's tapping on his face. And I thought, sure, why not? <laughs> and I know for those who, who may be new to tapping and the idea of tapping your face may sound really weird, but as Janine said, I'm a graduate of clown college. So this was not the strangest thing I'd ever been encounter- had ever encountered. So it's like, sure, I'm game. <laughs> so I, I learned this. I, and in the, in the first workshop, tapped away a chocolate craving and, and realized, wow, there's something really profound about uh, this process. And so I started introducing it into my hypnotherapy sessions. And then little by little, they became tapping sessions and it became my, my main modality for working with folks. Oh, wow. Wow. No, I have found that it just like, it, it, it's almost like, I don't, I don't, I can't explain it other than the, the immediate reaction your body gets to doing a tapping session. It's almost like crack. You're like, I need more. And, and I'm just going to do more of this. And I, I like hypnosis, you know, it's, it's fun. It's, it's good to kind of see things, but the tapping in the moment, having that tool for when you're like, I just need to like calm my, calm this roll down. So huge. Yeah, it's the quickest, simplest form of stress relief that I'm aware of that, that doesn't include some kind of tranquilizer. Um, you know, for, for those unfamiliar with it, it's based on acupuncture. So for thousands of years in Chinese medicine, they've said there's a flow of energy through the body along these pathways called meridians. And when the energy is flowing naturally, we experience our natural state of health and well-being physically and emotionally. 
when this energy gets blocked or disrupted, then we don't feel so good. We uh, don't think as clearly, we don't make the best choices. So that has all kinds of unfortunate consequences. So in traditional Chinese medicine, the doctor is sticking needles in these key points around the face and torso. And actually there are points all over the body. With the tapping, we're just using um, generally eight or nine points on the face and torso. And it downregulates stress very quickly. So when, especially when you're in a stressful situation, it's very difficult for someone to go, oh, I need to get myself into hypnosis right now, or I need to meditate right now, or I need to whatever. But you can just start tapping and start to calm that down. And yes, sometimes the effect is very profound and very quick. Sometimes it's not as obvious, but we have a growing body of modern research showing through uh, cortisol tests, it's one of the stress hormones, through fMRI studies showing the brain activity. So we have this, besides the anecdotal evidence, we have uh, actual research showing that uh, the stress is being downregulated in the body through the tapping. It's so cool that we can we can literally tap into our own energetic fields. And being an acupuncturist, of course, is probably also why I was drawn to it because I, I'm like, okay, we know that small intestine, this is this is small intestine three right. point, right? You know, yep. so looking at that point and going, okay, these were chosen for a reason. Now, here's my here's my question that I haven't had the chance to ask anybody. And and I'm wondering if you you've been um down any rabbit holes like this have you done any of like been to any of the, the places where they're doing the the fmris and they've kind of sequenced out why the certain specific points at the certain you know sequence is there is there a method to the madness there that i don't know about uh the the, the fmri studies the ones that i'm aware of and I think there may be more have been done by my friend dr peter stapleton who's a psychology professor in australia at a university but uh, the, the points that we're using were developed by Dr. Roger Callahan around 1980 when he first came up with his process called uh, thought field therapy. And so he had been studying a uh, acupressure mm, and okay. based on, on the classes that he was taking, it started with a woman with a lifelong water phobia. And after years of therapy and, and about a year and a half with him, he was making some progress, but not a lot. And he was taking this acupressure course and he's asked her one day, what is the physical symptom that you experience when you're disturbed about water? And she says, well, I got a knot in my stomach. And he said, okay, so uh, this particular point for the stomach meridian is right under the eye and just tapped under her eye for a moment. And she said, it's gone. And he said, what's gone? She said, the fear and ran towards a swimming pool outside the house. And he's saying, stop. She goes, it's okay. I know I don't know how to swim because she'd had this fear all of her life, never learned to swim. But she got down by the pool and was splashing water in her face and said, I feel fine. So naturally he thought, well, that's interesting. <laughs> and so he started experimenting with different patients uh, and based on these points that he had been learning in, in his study of acupressure and came up with these eight points that he would, uh, depending on what the person was experiencing, he would come up with different algorithms. He, so he might use three points in different sequences, depending on what was bothering them. And, and then one of us, well, within a year, he put himself out of business because all of his <laughs> patients coming to him on a weekly basis were like, I just don't need you anymore. So he started teaching this process. And one of his first students was a gentleman named Gary Craig, who had his degree in engineering from Stanford. And thinking like an engineer, he's like, okay, how do we simplify this? Rather than trying to figure out which three points and which sequence, if we're only using eight points, what if we just go top to bottom in a row and found he got the same great results? So he called this simplified version emotional freedom techniques or EFT. Nice, nice. Okay. So it all comes together for me now because I was wondering like, mm, is there something to this? And, you know, I, I've i tried doing kind of shorter ones when I was in a hurry or like when I was trying not to, because I think one of your videos you're saying like you can do this where people don't necessarily know exactly what you're doing. And so when I was in my office, I was like, maybe I can try to shorten it down. And, and it does did seem to work, but definitely the full sequence does seem to calm me better. Yeah. And there are times where we may not be able to use all the points. And sometimes we may just feel, I just want to uh, stick on one particular point. So like this, this kidney point uh, right here, the collarbone. 
So the kidney is often associated with fear. And it's been said there's only two emotions, ultimately. There's love and there's fear. So all the uncomfortable emotions have fear at their roots. So sometimes just tapping this fear point can, uh, can downregulate whatever is disturbing us. But there are times, there are times where I might uh, try to associate what I'm saying with the particular point. So uh, for instance, this bladder point is associated with sadness, gallbladder associated with anger, stomach point associated with fear. So I might do that, but there have been times where I might be experiencing a particular emotion but I'll feel drawn to just stick to a different point that may not be exactly what that point is associated with. So that's the, the great thing about EFT is we, we don't worry too much about that because the, the mind is complex. Our body is complex. Our emotions are complex. So rather than just going, oh, I know exactly what the emotion is. And I know exactly which point to tap. Trust your gut. And sometimes you might find, wow, I just feel like tapping this, this other point even though it may not line up with what I traditionally have heard about uh, emotions and meridians. That's good to know. That's good to know, because I think a lot of people, you know, when they look at, okay, I got to get the sequence. Do I, am I doing it right? You know? And so, which, (laughs) which is why, you know, I love watching your videos on YouTube because we can follow along, but at the same time, sometimes you'll be like, oh no, he's talking and moved to this one. I'm still at this one. Yeah. And and so people think I'm doing it wrong. Oh no, it's not going to work. And you, yeah, it's any tapping that we do is beneficial. I mean, that's the great thing about the research that's been done is we see these biological markers. We see the immune system being boosted. We see cortisol decreasing. There are all kinds of different uh, benefits that are happening, whether we're consciously aware of them or not. Mm -hmm. So even if we're tapping along going, I don't feel any different. It's like, okay, but we could hook you up to a machine and measure biological markers and see and show you, yes, these benefits are taking place while you're doing it. Um, but uh, yeah, so any tapping that we're doing is beneficial. If you're, even if it's just for a few moments and you're only tapping one point and you're not saying any words, you're still getting benefits. So that's, that's one of the powerful things about it is to, to not worry about it. And if you're tapping different points, I've told folks, like when I do podcasts and it's just audio only, I always tell people, okay, I'm going to describe where the points are. But as I go through that, I'm not going to necessarily say the points at the same time. Don't worry if you're not on the same point that I am. If you're tapping, you're doing benefit to your nervous system. So good to know. So good to know. And and yes, this this podcast will be both video and audio, folks. So you guys can try it both ways and see what you think. You know, why not? Why not? Because I, I think there is something like the first couple times. And so we might have some newbies here that are like, EFT, okay, what is this business? You know, that that maybe watching it for the first time, you know, might be might be important to just kind of see how it goes. But, you know, it is funny, though, like you had said that you might feel drawn to one particular spot i've actually gone through a whole series with you where i was just tapping on the same spot and i didn't repeat the words either because that's something that a lot of people will will say do i have to say it out loud and i'm like no i feel like i can say it in my head and still get benefit i'll let you speak to that a little bit well the thing about saying things out loud and saying them emphatically is that we're then more emotionally engaged So the more we are experiencing the emotion in our body, the more effective the tapping can be. But it is always been, I I believe it is always beneficial. I I believe that if we literally hooked ourselves up to these machines, we would be able to see it's like, okay, even though I'm not saying the words, even though I'm in a different sequence, there are still benefits happening. But when we're trying to address a particular emotion, the more engaged, the more we can tune into that, so it's, it's, you know, zeroing in on it. So if you spill something on your carpet and you get the vacuum cleaner, you could just be randomly vacuuming and you're eventually going to clean the carpet as opposed to I'm going to really focus right here on where I spilled the dirt or whatever. And uh, so I might get, get it cleaned up more quickly, more effectively. Yeah, that makes sense. And and here's the thing that, you know, I'll share a little of my personal story with, with tapping, and maybe this might resonate with someone. You know, for me, I like to talk things out. I'm a talker. 
And when I need to talk things stu stuff out with my brain and how I'm thinking, I was also drawn to to the style of tapping that I could go, you know, say the things that I needed to say to just get it out. And yeah. and that was the that's been some of the most fun parts for me. So that being said, how do you get the right things to come out of your mouth? I swear every how many do you have to do multiple video takes of your tapping or is this like you just flow? No, that, and that's the funny thing is because I mess up my words sometimes. I'll be saying something and I'll have to stop and I'll go, I, it, it's this. <laughs> and I won't and I won't edit the video. If it gets yeah. really bad, if I'm totally tripping over, I'll go, all right, I got I have to stop this. But in general, I like to just go in one take because when I'm doing the tapping, it comes through me. It's just an intuitive process. And if I were to try to write down, okay, here's the perfect script for this and tried to memorize that or read it, I'd be tapping along and the muse would hit me and I'd be like, no, now I want to say this. So I would keep changing it. So there's no point in me trying to script it. So I just trust that it's going to come out and it's not always perfect. And I'll be tapping with a client and I'll say, I'll make up some metaphor and they'll say, yeah, that's not really it for me. And I'll go, okay, I had an intuitive hit and it may not be it for you. It may be, this is important for you and you're consciously trying to deny it. Or it may just be, this is just going to trigger something that'll get there. And I'm just going to trust the judgment because I don't want to center and say, well, I can only, I'm only going to say what I'm absolutely certain is going to be right. Cause I don't know. So I just try to not censor myself and go through with it. And yeah, a lot of times it just comes out and I, I, so I was gratifying on YouTube when people comment and say, are you in my mind? You are saying exactly what, <laughs> it's like, well, there's just, we're, we're very similar. We have a lot of the same thoughts and, and ideas. And so it's just going with, okay, what are the possible reasons why I might be thinking this? What are the possible reasons I might be resisting that and things like that? Oh, I've definitely thought that before too, for sure, for sure. Cause it, it does seem like you're you're just in the flow. It's like, wow, he's in my head. He knows, he knows me. He gets me. Oh my goodness, it's too funny. But it's it's one of those things though, with what's happening that I've found like as I've used it myself at and, and really becoming a new person. That's kind of what I was using the tapping for. And, and you've got, you know, this, your five day program of tapping into your best self. And, and this is something that I'd love for you to talk about kind of how this is meant to work for folks, because I have found that for a lot of patients of mine, if we can get them tapping at least you know, for a, a week or so, I can get them to do it longer. And it does speed up their process of whatever's holding them back. So let's talk about what was behind the five days and, and all of that. Yeah. Well, and like what you were saying about the um, enhancing the, the healing process, mm -hmm. because most, if not all of the issues that bother us physically and or emotionally uh are caused by or worsened by stress. So when we have something to deal with stress, it allows us to change things. We're also very, uh, we're very addicted to the familiar. Mm -hmm. We don't like change. We want things to be different, but we don't want anything to change. And we don't want ourselves to change. So we keep th saying, I wanna have this totally different life where I have a healthy body and I have a lot more money and I've got this perfect uh, romance and all that, but I don't want to change personally. <laughs> so I'm going to, you know, fit myself into this, uh, this totally different situation, you know, uh, and, you know, imagine like taking a picture of you have this, you know, this winter scene and you've got somebody all bundled up in clothes and it's like, okay, now I want to take this image of a beach, but I want to put myself there, but I don't want to change my clothes. <laughs> so you're going to be out of place. <laughs> and Dr. Joyce brother says, we will never perform consistently in a manner which is inconsistent with how we see ourselves. So uh, what you were saying earlier, Janine, about identity is, yeah. is so key. It's, it's, it's our identity. So we think I want my best life, but I want to stay the same. No, you, to be, live your best life, you have to be your best self. So I wanted to come up with a, a sort of a simple five day thing just to get the ball rolling of looking at things like self-forgiveness and self-confidence 
and really allowing ourselves to see the awesomeness that's inside. I have, uh, so you can see, uh, <laughs> well, those of you on audio can't see this, but on the wall behind me, I have a, a, a picture of Michelangelo's David. I have Davids everywhere. On, on every wall, I have a little statue here on my desk, which is always my favorite piece of art. It's the first time I saw it as a kid. <laughs> but it's also a perfect metaphor for this work because Michelangelo said that the statues were already there, perfect inside the marble. And all he had to do was chip away what didn't belong to reveal the masterpiece inside. And to me, that's, that's a perfect metaphor for what we're doing. Our best self is already there inside, covered up by this marble that's made up of self-doubt and feelings of unworthiness and guilt and shame and anger and a lot of misinformation. And so the tapping is just chipping away what doesn't belong, clearing away those reasons why we can't feel confident, why we can't love ourselves, why we can't feel worthy. And as we chip away those misunderstandings, we recognize, wow. I am awesome. I am God's gift to the world. And, and it's not an arrogant thing because as we see it in ourselves, we see it in other people too. Arrogance is saying I'm better than other people. And that comes from a lack of confidence. Um, it's, it's an insecurity. But when we're truly recognizing the awesomeness, the magnificence of who we really are, we see it in other people too. And we, wanna, we want them to chip it away. And no, no, if only you could see how awesome you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I feel like I've said that to a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's why, you know, tapping just is such a great tool. I mean, I definitely now use it in my office to, to help people to kind of awesome. break through or move through because I do acupuncture. I'll sometimes have someone do it before we get the needles in. And then sometimes <laughs> I know I I'll try to stack in whatever I can. But one of the <laughs> things I wanted to ask you about and see if you had any experience with any clients or anyone you've worked with as women get older, we tend to have, of course, like guys, some hormonal shifts that will make us feel like we're crazy. Like we just start to think in, all, you know, all of our insecurities can start to come up and it's not for everyone, but it's definitely for, for a, a lot of women, the insecurities about their body, the insecurities about their mind, then not being able to think correctly. These things start to come up. Have you worked with clients like this? Yeah, I've worked with people <laughs> at, at all different ages and yeah, and always it's, there are things that go on inside the body and the body, body, mind is connected. You know, we, the, the, the Cartesian split of uh, there's mind and there's body and never the twain shall meet is old news. So it's recognizing that, that these things affect each other. So as our body is going through things that does affect our mind and, and our brain and how that functions. So yeah, that's one of the cool things about tapping is it's such a simple process that we can allow ourselves to, to calm down and downregulate all of that stuff and that the fear, because what happens is when we start to have, you know, maybe we, we feel some hormonal thing going on in the body and it triggers something in the brain and our, and our mind starts going down a path that it really is best if it doesn't go down. And then it becomes this cycle and it's like, oh, now I'm worried. And now I'm pumping even more things. And, and my midbrain is going into fight or flight and uh, prefrontal cortex goes bye-bye. I'm not thinking clearly anymore. And, uh, you know, this is, this is exactly what a, a lot of advertisers want to do is they want to put you in this state of prefrontal cortex goes bye-bye. And you are now like, yes, what? Um, <laughs> political campaigns. It's all about get, get, get rid of the prefrontal cortex, get people really scared. And, uh, and that's the thing is that it just, it takes us over. So allowing ourselves to have a simple thing of, that doesn't take a lot of thought. You know, I don't have to sit there and write down things and make lists and try to you know, just allow myself to calm down and go, okay. And then I can start to think more clearly and go, okay, my mind is running away with myself. And these things that I'm thinking may not be true <laughs> and I might be safer than I think I am. And uh, we start to think more clearly again. So to me, tapping ideally is a daily practice. It's, it's energy hygiene. So like we have physical hygiene, like brushing our teeth and taking a shower. Most of us do it on a regular basis before we need it. We don't wait for a while until people are holding their nose around us and going, <laughs> Oh, that's right. I haven't taken a shower in three weeks. Maybe I should uh, do that. But with stress, Stress is always building up. And most of us are carrying ambient levels of stress we're not aware of. 
Most of us are carrying a cell phone with us that is constantly saying, here's something else to be upset about. How you doing? <laughs> well, I'm about to ruin that. Did you hear about? You know, and and I'm, the amygdala gets hijacked and we get upset and, and we're not, and we just go, well, that's just life. That's how it is. Not even recognizing how that is. And especially if we are going through some kind of hormonal changes, we're even more susceptible. And, and those kind of triggers can be even more damaging. So to allow ourselves to have some way of constantly, you know, being in a, in a cleaner space energetically, then we're, we're able to manage those, uh, those life changes a little more easily. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I like the idea of energy hygiene. I'm, I might, I might steal that. Um, Go I'll give it. you credit. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> Because I'm looking at it going like, you know, we talk about meditating, right? Every morning. And for a lot of people, meditation is really this like concept of like, what? I don't know. I'm going to sit and make lists. At least for me, that's how it was for me. I couldn't get out of the brain. It just kept coming in and, and telling me stuff. But when I had something to do and say, now it's a whole different ball game. Oh, okay. I can, I can do this kind of pseudo meditation thing, you know, in terms of what I tell myself. Now, so... When, when you talk about energy hygiene, what would be like, or maybe, maybe just tell us what you do. Like, do you, do you do every morning before you get out of bed? Do you do a session? Like, how does it work for you? What's your energy hygiene protocol? Yeah. So I, I have a whole morning routine of exercise and things like that, but it does start. First thing is some tapping. And for folks who are aware of EFT and say, well, wait a minute, isn't EFT just about getting rid of a problem? Like if I feel stress or I feel angry or I feel upset and you start by tapping and saying, even though I have this awful feeling, I choose to love and accept myself. So Brad, you start every morning in a bad mood. No, <laughs> I don't get up. Even though it's another morning and I feel like crap again. No. Uh, the great thing about tapping is we can tap while saying affirmations or prayers so like one of the first things I'll, I'll do on many mornings is I'll tap while saying the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. As, I, as I'm facing the day, I want to get my energy system as, uh, as balanced as I can so that I'm more open to what the day brings and, and be at my best game, be thinking as clearly as possible. So it's not that I, I get up in a bad mood and I'm aware of anything there. I'm just figuring just in case there's any part of me that might be feeling some stress or resistance that I'm not consciously aware of, I want to clear that out. And it, it's not like you can get too clear. It's like, no, 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 you already have no stress. Don't tap anymore. The, the floor is already clean. Stop vacuuming. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's mm. nothing so good. It can't get better. <laughs> right. right. That's so true. That's so true. And I mean, every morning, I think for a lot of people, if if you guys do continue to tap, you'll find that it's not as crappy of a morning if you had like a run where it like really stunk. I did find that, you know, I was waking up for, for a good while, like in panic. I'd wake up and be like, I have so many things to do. Oh my gosh, I gotta check my email. Oh my gosh, I gotta do this, this, and this. And then once I started tapping, it was like, all right, so we've got the day, we got this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, we have so much programming about how to respond to life mm -hmm. and how I should be upset. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're shooting on ourselves all the time. Other people are shooting on us and we're shooting on other people and recognizing and so much of that is I should be upset about this. And and we especially we go on social media, everyone else is upset. I should be upset too. And I should shoot on other people and and you know and create less peace. <laughs> You can either be moving towards peace or towards chaos. And, uh, you know, where do you want your energy to go? So, yeah, having that uh, that simple way of, of just going, okay, I want to um, be in that space and I want to be creating space. And but, but yeah, we have that that idea of I should be upset because part of this is afraid that we won't be motivated otherwise. Mm -hmm. We have so much programming about being motivated by misery. And this idea of, you know, well, I won't eat healthy until the doctor tells me that I need to change my diet. So many people wait until it, it's a crisis. And because we've learned so many things that way. As children, maybe we didn't clean our room until our parents started yelling at us or, you know, or grounding us. And until there was punishment, we didn't do it. And so the only reason we would clean our rooms was to avoid punishment, mm -hmm. as opposed to, 
recognizing a clean room makes my life easier. Not having to trip over toys and, and knowing where my things are and just being able to have space to move around. Environment is so important for our mental well-being. But as children, we don't know that. It's something that needs to be taught. But most parents don't know that because they were never taught that. So rather than explaining to a child the virtues of a clean room, it's just like, just do it because, because I'm going to, you know, I'm going to yell at you or I'm going to spank you or I'm going to ground you or whatever. And you get no dessert for a week. So that's why you should clean your room. Well, as soon as I'm grown up and, and I can go and eat dessert whenever I want, <laughs> why should I bother cleaning my room? And, and a lot of people are living this way. It's like without the, the threat of punishment, I'm not going to do that. So we might wake up in the morning going, okay, I've got things to do. Well, I probably won't do them unless I feel, uh, you know, some stress about that. I need to feel some anxiety. So, all right, kick in the cortisol, get upset. Oh yes, I've got to do this again. All right. Now I'm ready to start the day. Now I'm properly motivated. It's like, you know, it's the, 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 the old thing about the stick and the carrot. And so many of us only believe in the stick. It's only the stick that's going to do it. The carrot on its own is not going to motivate me. And that's just resistance. It's old programming. If there was no resistance, we would move towards carrots. We'd be so far ahead of the stick. It's like, I, I don't even need to worry about that because I'm so motivated to go for these things. But the resistance is there. You know, we're, we're always running um, cost benefit analysis. When, whenever we're looking at some activity or some, some goal in our minds, we're running through going, okay, what are the pros of reaching that goal? And what are the cons? If I have, if I'm trying to get healthier, what are the pros of being healthier? Well, I'll feel better in my body. You know, I might look better and I might enjoy that. What are the cons? Well, I might have to give up eating pizza three nights a week. And I might have to lower my alcohol intake and I'm going to have to exercise. And I'm weighing that out. It's like, yeah, you know, looking good in a bathing suit is not that appealing to me that I'd have to give up whatever else this is. And, and so, and then we call, and then we beat ourselves up and we say, I'm so lazy. And it's just not true. We're not lazy. We just have resistance based on old ideas of exercise is painful. There are people, you go to the gym and you see them and they're in bliss doing something that you think is painful. So it's, it's just mindset. Uh, eating healthier. We have this idea from kids. It's like candy, good, vegetables, bad. Vegetables are awesome. There are some vegetables I'd rather eat than sugar, you know, you, depending on how it's prepared, things like that. So, but we have all this old mindset that, that's running our lives. And, and then we have a, when we try to change that, we have a stress response. So, gee, if we only had some way of dealing with stress and we could help ourselves change our minds, and then we'd clear the resistance going, oh, exercise can actually be fun. You know, I have, I have a VR headset and I do these exercise programs in, in a virtual reality world and it's an absolute blast. So I'm working out and having fun. Um, there, so there's all, all kinds of different ways of, of change that mindset. So now I don't have to wait until the doctor says, look, you have to change your routine or, or uh, you're on your way to an early grave. It's like, no, I, here's what's possible having a, a healthy body and being able to live life fully and, and feel that your body can support you in that. It's like, yes, that's so awesome. I, and, and without any resistance, of course, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. Just that, that concept of minimal resistance and reducing the resistance yeah. is, is so huge. So huge. Yeah. And with yeah. the tapping, that's definitely one of the things that I found that for me, it was one of the most beneficial things. I, you know, back in the day, I found Jessica, I can't, I think Ortner maybe is her last name. Yeah, um, her book. Yeah. Yeah. For the, the weight loss and, and yes. kind of helping me there. And then I kind of, of course, moved into working on your stuff to help with the mind and, and really understanding this journey of, of becoming me. And so I, I can see your five day program for folks being incredible for them to kind of either launch the new them or really just get a good solid foundation for yeah becoming their new new self yeah starting to recognize how how awesome you are how deserving you are of the best life you know you are worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer and when you allow yourself to recognize that life gets so much better 
you know, but it's just, it's a matter of clearing that resistance and, and just reckon. So the extent to which we don't have what, what we say we want tends to be the extent to which we're resisting it. Mm. And, and we resist it because of old misunderstandings. You know, we might have old beliefs about why it's not safe to be healthier. We might have old ideas about why it's not safe to have more money. You know, people, everybody says they want more money, but if you get right down to it and you ask them how safe it feels, it's like, oh, well, I do have this belief that uh, money is the root of all evil and rich people are greedy and all this. And I don't want to be a, a greedy, bad person and I don't want to be evil. So we unconsciously stop ourselves from having the money that we want. And, and it's brilliant. We, we beat ourselves up and go, I'm so stupid. It's like, no, self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. Even though the action you're taking seems to be moving you away from what you consciously say is your goal, it's an act of self-love because some part of you believes it's not safe. Hmm. If I'm afraid of the, the, ben the, the consequences of being healthier or having more money or traveling or whatever it might be, part of me is, is helping me dodge a bullet by making it impossible to, to reach those goals. So we want to be compassionate with ourselves and go, thank you so much for trying to protect me in old outdated ways that are no longer serving me. <laughs> now we're going to, we're going to truly make life better in, in much healthier, more uh, rational ways. It is incredible how we will hold on to what we subconsciously believe is safe. Yeah. I, I find it's just like, wow, all those things we, we will do. I, I know I did it for years. Years. Yeah. I mean, when we're, when we're eating junk food, it, it, you know, we might objectively realize, okay, there is nothing good for my body in this. You know, my, my taste buds are the only part of me benefiting from this. <laughs> and, uh, and, and my mind, because I have this belief about, uh, you know, well, this reminds me of happy times. And in that moment, we may be thinking, okay, we might've had a bad day at work and I'm, and, and I'm just feeling uncomfortable. And my mind says, you know, it'll make it us feel better. And so it's an act of self-love. And e even though we could objectively say, this is so bad for me, but it's like, okay, as far as the immediate concern of not feeling good emotionally, this is what's going to feel good for me. And, I'm, and I know that later I'll have to deal with consequences, but that's later. Right now, I can't deal with consequences right now. So it's really being compassionate with ourselves for trying to take care of ourselves. But that, that uncomfortable feeling is that stress response to whatever's going on. And tapping is a very quick way to start to deal with that and go, oh, even before I open the box of cookies, I'm starting to feel more calm. I'm starting to feel better. And maybe, maybe I don't need any cookies right now, or maybe I'll allow myself one or two, but I, then I don't need to eat the whole box. That is definitely what I, I definitely used tapping for back in the day. I mean, I, I had to, right. You know, it's, it's, it's a great pattern interrupt, but it's also a great way to, to get us out of that loop thought yeah. too. I feel like it's a, it's a great way to get yourself out of that. So we're going to take a brief break and, and let folks know a little bit more about your program. And then we will come right back. Hey, health junkies, whether you've been tapping for a while or you are interested in tapping and you want to test it out, I highly recommend checking out Brad's free five-day program, Tapping Into Your Best Self. Every single day, you'll have a tap with a mission and it's good stuff. I've done it myself. I really do find it helpful. And boy, it is a great way to really get started on becoming the new you. So go to tapwithbrad.com forward slash best self. That's B-E-S-T-S-E-L-F. And you can get his free five-day program now. Let's get back to the podcast. All right, we're back. So one of the things I was really wanting to talk about is resistance and resistance to change, resistance, you know, just in general. And I know you've, you've tapped on it before. I've seen a couple of sessions Share with us a little bit about how you can use tapping to help with resistance in the mind. Yeah. So when we are facing something that, uh, well, that we consider a threat. So the amygdala in the midbrain perceives things as threats and tries to avoid that. You know, we want to run away from things that are 
that we that we see as unsafe based on our on our beliefs. And it happens at an unconscious level so often. We may be sitting there going, I don't know why I'm where I'm at. How did this happen? Because I said I want it to be over here and I'm over here. That's because at an unconscious level, we're making all kinds of little decisions to avoid, to resist something that we perceive as a threat based on our programming. So like I said, the idea that money is the root of all evil, mm -hmm. which is not the actual quote. <laughs> the actual <laughs> translation is the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And, but, but it's been narrowed down to money is the root of all evil. Money is bad. So we have this belief. And so when we have an op an opportunity to have more money, like we're uh, a interview for a job that would have a great paycheck. We might just forget to go to that interview or we might totally blow it. And it's not that we're bad or stupid. It's that some part of us is saying, look, this is not safe. That would be too much money. That would make us a bad person. It would make us evil. And this is all happening at this unconscious level. You know, consciously, we create our dream boards. We say, oh, this is what I want, the, the, the house on the beach and the, the Lamborghini and all that. And our unconscious mind, which is, you know, 80 to 90% of our mind versus 10 to 20% of the conscious mind is saying, that's fine. You go ahead and fantasize about that, but we're going to make sure that it doesn't happen because it's not safe. So that's why we resist it. And, but that, that resistance just comes up in, in our energy and in, in, in that stress so that we feel uncomfortable and we move away from it. Just like uh, touching an electric fence. Oh, that's bad. That's a shock. Let's move away and go to the other direction. And so tapping is like cutting the wires on the, uh, on the electric fence. It doesn't make us stupid. It's not like, you know, if, if there's an electric wire there to protect us from falling off a cliff, it's not like I cut that wire and go, oh, now I can fall off the cliff. <laughs> we, we still, we get this idea that I can only avoid danger if I'm in fear mode. It's only if I'm scared that I'll make good choices. And so that's why we hang on to these fears. But most of us walking down the street and we come to a crosswalk and we push the button and we wait for the little green man to show up for us to walk across. And, and we might still look both ways. I do that on my morning walk every day. I will look both ways because there are a <laughs> lot of people who whip right through, even though the crosswalk sign is, is lit. So, but I don't have to stand there and go, all right, now to make sure that I look both ways and to make sure I wait for a little green man, I need to get myself worked up. Okay, heart's pounding, sweat pouring out. Okay, now I'm ready to cross safely. It's like, no, I can be totally chill and still remember it. It's like, it's like I'm relaxed and go, well, I'm totally relaxed. I think I'll walk out into traffic. <laughs> so it's allowing ourselves to recognize that we don't need that fear response. Yeah. Now it's beneficial when it happens, you know, and there are no negative emotions, anger, fear. It, it's like a smoke alarm. We want it there so that when it, it's there to let us know there's something to be addressed, but it may not be a fire. It's just letting us know, pay attention. But once we recognize, we see the fire and we go to put it out, the smoke detect doesn't have to keep going off. The alarm doesn't mm -hmm. have to keep going. And we so often hang on to that. I was like, no, I don't need to. And I, and I don't want to act from that fear or that anger. You know, we don't want to sit there and go, oh, the alarm's going yeah. off. Oh, I have to go into the kitchen and, oh my God, there's a fire. And I start trashing everything and I'm going to throw the, you know, push the, the stove over and all this because I'm reacting out of it. It's like, no, the anger or the fear or whatever that emotion is there is there. Let me know. It's like, okay, now I want to think of what is the best remedy for the situation. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that, that fear response comes up and, uh, and, and tells us back away, move away from this and, and go in another direction. So the tapping helps us to calm that down so that we can look at it and say, is this something that's really dangerous? Would it be dangerous to have more money? Would it be dangerous to be healthier? You know, I can handle it. <laughs> it, it, it it's getting to that place of recognizing I can handle this. I can handle things being better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I, you mentioned that I'm starting to think of different scenarios I've seen with patients, especially with the, the fear turning to anxiety, turning to yeah. back to fear. And, yeah. and especially when you're, you're midlife and anything with the heart, 
I feel like any heart palpitation, any little blip, anything there can go from zero to like 60 real fast, it yeah. seems. <laughs> Yeah, when I'm out for a run and my and I might feel something in my left arm, it's like, oh my goodness, my left arm! I'm running too hard. <laughs> it's crazy like, how okay, we can go. Calm down. <laughs> I mean, it's good to pay attention, right? But you just want to pay attention, so I I stop, and I'll go. Okay, I don't know what that is. It may it may be related to the heart. It may not. But I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to just take it easy here, and I'm going to make good choices. Without going, I'm gonna to get on my phone and call my wife and say, "You've got to come out, drive out, and find me and pick me up." <laughs> so oh, oh, we're goodness. able to get to a place and make better decisions. And and in that more calm place, I could also, if it was something more, I could say, "This is something to be concerned about. Maybe I should call my wife and have her come find me." <laughs> That's, I mean, important thing to say, of course. I think a lot of people are going to think, like, "Can I tap and override my my internal intuition?" And you just spelled it out right there. Yeah. No, no. Your higher, your higher wisdom is there. You don't, we can tap away fear, but we don't tap away intelligence. We don't, you know, our, we don't lose our common sense. Important. That's important. Plus, I think it also helps us to kind of narrow, like you said, narrow it down. Do I need to call the wife? Do I not need to call the <laughs> wife? You know, I yeah. imagine you out running, you know, are, do you run a lot, like multiple miles? What What's your story with running? Well, not anymore. I used to. Uh, at, at this point, I, I mostly do uh, walks, and and sometimes I'll I'll run for parts. I'll do interval training, and I'll and I'll rain, run for certain parts. And then it's like if I notice, all right, that feels uncomfortable, then I then I stop. Because I'm you know, at, at my age, I'm not trying to win any Mister Universe awards <laughs> or or uh, impress anybody. Um, it's like, I just want to be healthy enough to, to be able to do what I want to do. Sure. So I, so I don't, uh, push myself any harder than, you know, I exercise regularly and I, and I, at least I do the VR workshop workout where it gets the heart rate up. Um, so I, I do all those things to be healthy, but I don't, uh, I don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, there comes a time where we just, you know, know what we want to do and and what's what's important to us. And so yeah. I think for a lot of people too, maybe we have some athletes listening here. I I was visioning you like running and tapping, you know. <laughs> I I have been out, no joke, I've been out and tapping while while on a hike just because some stuff has come up and yeah. more emotional stuff that popped up out of nowhere yeah. on a hike. But I would imagine that some folks might actually use this in in a in a sporting situation maybe before a run you know something of that nature there what well, there's a, a video footage of a an olympic runner tapping just before his race uh there are there are top level athletes use this i i know of um super bowl winning teams that use tapping world series winning baseball teams that use tapping uh, I have worked with people at the highest levels of music and film. And so there are people in all kinds of different realms, but definitely I, I've worked with a couple of Olympic athletes on just up in their game. And it's like, I, you know, if there's any resistance stopping me from being the best at my sport, uh, I want to clear that. And we have all kinds of reasons why we might, there may be a fear of being the best. There may be a fear of, pushing it and finding out there's a part of us that's afraid of finding out what we're capable of, mm. you know, cause man, if I really knew what I was capable of, the expectations on me would be uh, so difficult. So, you know, if I, I I'm living high on lowered expectations, <laughs> you know, if people don't expect much from me. I get to breeze through life. Oh, sure. I don't get to experience everything in life that I say I want, but you know, there's a part of us that clings to that. It's like, even if our lives are crap, eh, it's my crap. I dealt with it yesterday. I know how to deal with it. I, I can deal with it again today, but something new, something that, you know, objectively might be better, it's still different. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I and I resist that. So yeah, tapping is a great way to look at what are those things that we're resisting and down-regulate the stress, clear the resistance. So it's like, ooh, I will have that. Thank you. <laughs> and I do have what it takes to get it. 
I I love that concept. I love the concept of just thinking about all the different things in life that we probably do have resistance to and what we could do if we cleared it to move forward. So I would love, love, love to tap with you today on resistance and let's give folks, you know, something really good that they can use to try out and see if they can start ticking off little things that they've been resistant to, no matter what they're talking about, whether it's sports, life, food, yeah. whatever. Yeah, absolutely. So first, I'm going to give a quick demonstration, especially for yeah. those of you, um, for those of you who are new to tapping, and I'll explain it for those who are listening just on audio. What we're going to do is take uh, the fingertips of our index and middle finger, and the meridians run up and down both sides of the body. And so you can tap with either hand, or a lot of people tap with both hands at the same time. So we'll take the, the fingertips of the, for demonstration of your dominant hand, and gently tap on the edge of your opposite hand. So right between your wrist and your pinky on the edge of your hand, gently tap in there. And that's where we'll use, say the setup phrase. So the setup phrase is whatever we're aware of that we're trying to get rid of, or, or at least trying to process. Yeah. It's not only getting rid of emotions so much as processing and moving through them, because as I said, they serve a purpose, but we want to get through the discomfort. So if it's, uh, I'm feeling stress, or I uh, feel this tension in my shoulders, or I'm nervous about this report that's due next week, or I'm really angry at Bob because he was a real jerk this week, whatever it is, that's the, the, the setup phrase, this stress, this anger at Bob. And we'd rate that on a scale of zero to 10, just to get an idea of how upsetting is it for me? You know, it may just be a four, I may not be terribly bothered, it may be an eight. And, and, and we wanna, ideally be aware of how we feel it physically so that we're really aware of, okay, this is, uh, I'm angry at Bob. It's, it's in my shoulders and it's about an eight. So we would tap on the side of the hand and say, even though I'm angry at Bob, I choose to love and accept myself. We repeat that three times. And it's just a level of self-acceptance while we have this issue, because most of us are programmed to avoid what's bothering us mm -hmm. and what we resist persists. Mm -hmm. you know, even when I, I introduce CFT to, to, to folks and I say, start off by saying, even though I feel the stress, what, what, what? no, you talked about the stress. There's, you got to do positive thinking. You got to focus on the positive. You can't say what, what the bad thing is. It's like, so if you break your arm, are you going to go to the doctor and say, let's talk about my legs. My legs feel really great. <laughs> They're <laughs> like, amazing. <laughs> yeah. You know? If, if, if your dog poops on your carpet, are you going to say, I'm going to look at my, all the clean parts of my carpet and just talk about how beautiful my carpet is. <laughs> you got to look at what's there and deal with it. And that's what we're doing with the tapping. We're not just dwelling on it and commiserating over it. We're just looking at, here's what's going on. And here's what I want to address. So, so that's the, the setup is tapping on the side of the hand saying, even though I have this issue, I choose to love and accept myself. Then we go through these points, right? The first point is right at the beginning of the eyebrow. So right near the center of your face and just gently tap in there. And we generally tap these points between five and 10 times, uh, depending on the length of the setup phrase, it, it might be longer. So then while tapping there, we'd say the setup phrase, this stress or this anger at Bob. Follow your eyebrow out to the side of your eye. So the outside corner of your eye socket and gently tap in there and repeat the phrase, all this stress right under the middle of your eye, just above your cheek, all this stress. Right under your nose, just above your upper lip, all this stress. Then right below your lower lip, just above your chin, all this stress. The next point is the collarbone point. So if you feel your collarbones just about meet, there's a little bit of a U shape at the base of your throat. And you can tap with all of your fingertips or even make a fist and tap right over that area, all this stress. Next point is about four inches below your armpit. It's right about bra strap level. And I'm sure even the guys can figure out where that is. All the stress. And then finally the top of your head. So with all of your fingertips tapping around the crown of your head, all this stress. Then you take a deep breath and you check in again and say, okay, how much stress is there now on a scale of zero to 10? And sometimes it'll go from an eight to a zero like that. Sometimes it'll just go from an eight to a 7.75. <laughs> and that's still beneficial. <laughs> um, and I, uh, but also it's often like peeling the layers of the onion. So I may say, yeah, I'm still feeling some tension in my shoulders, but now I know why, 
you know, this, ner- this report that I was nervous about. Now I know exactly why, because I got this bad grade on a report in the third grade and I never forgave myself for that. And I still, and I've always been nervous about reports since then. And now I can clear up decades of stress that I've been carrying. Mm-hmm. So that's great. Mm-hmm. So, so those are the basic points as we go through them uh, in this round, I'm not going to say the points. So I'll, I'll mention where we start with the col- uh, with the side of the hand. And then when we switch to the eyebrow, for those of you listening to audio, and then just go through the points as best as you remember them. Don't worry, as, as Janine and I were talking about earlier, <laughs> don't worry about being on the same point that, that, that we're on. Any tap you're doing, and even if you're just tapping the same point, that's fine. And then you can go back and, and watch videos later and see, oh, okay, there's where the points are. So what I'd like you to do is close your eyes, take a deep breath. And I want you to think about something that you say that you want. It may be... Uh, a certain level of income. It may be a certain level of health. You know, you may have a fitness goal. I want to be able to run five miles. Um, you know, it may be uh, some career goal. It may be a relationship goal. Think about something that you've been saying you want. Something I mean, maybe something you put on your vision board and imagine having that as best as you can. Imagine you have it and just feel what goes on inside your body. Say, it's safe for me to have this. Let that rattle around inside and notice on a scale of zero to 10, how safe it feels. Now, part of you is gonna, might try to say, oh, it's definitely a 10. And I'm gonna challenge you on that because if it was a 10, either you'd have already achieved it or you would be well on your way and wouldn't need to be working on it, <laughs> um, doing tapping on resistance. Uh, now say, it's okay for me to have this goal. I deserve to have this goal and rate those on a scale of zero to 10 and don't judge yourself harshly. If the number is lower than you'd like it to be, just allow yourself to see, Oh, if it's not at a 10, I have resistance and allow yourself to be aware of where the resistance might show up in your body. You might feel some discomfort somewhere as you imagine these goals, be aware of any thoughts, beliefs, or memories that might come up as to why you couldn't or shouldn't. It's like, Oh yeah, it's nice to fantasize about that, but your best friend would hate you if you had that. And you don't want your best friend to hate you. So that's where the resistance would come up. Don't worry about it if you're not consciously aware of the resistance. Just notice what you can. Take a deep breath. Open your eyes. So we're going to start by tapping on the side of the hand. So just tap where, I, uh, where I'm tapping and repeat back what I say. And I don't know, Janine, you can say it out loud or, or for the purpose of the video. I know a lot of um, hosts don't. For everyone else, I encourage you to say it out loud and uh, if you're in a position where you, where you can. So tap on the side of the hand. Even though I might have some resistance, I choose to love and accept myself. Even though I might have some resistance to this goal, I choose to love and honor myself. Even though I might have some resistance to this goal. And part of me resists saying that. I don't have any resistance to this goal. I am totally on board with having this happen. And every single day, I'm doing absolutely everything I can to reach this goal. And maybe part of me says, no, I'm not. And that might be because I have some resistance. And even though I might have some resistance to this goal, I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who contributes to this. So tapping the eyebrow point, all this resistance, and then we'll just go through all these points, side of the eye, all this resistance, all this resistance to receiving this goal, all this resistance to achieving this goal, 
all this resistance to admitting I have any resistance. Because that's a brilliant way to resist getting it. If I convince myself that I have no resistance, then I won't address that resistance. And I get to safely avoid reaching this goal. Because part of me says, it's not safe to reach this goal. It's safe to fantasize about it. It's safe to put it on my vision board. But if I'm not doing everything I can to get there, I choose to be open to the possibility that some part of me is afraid of reaching this goal. And I'm protecting myself. If I'm not doing everything I can to reach it, and maybe I'm doing things that move me in the opposite direction, it's not that I'm bad or stupid. It is not that I am weak or lazy. It's just evidence that I have some old programming about why I couldn't or shouldn't reach this goal. About why it might not be safe for me. Am I afraid I couldn't handle the consequences? I couldn't handle the changes in my life. And people might be envious. They might be mad at me. So I shouldn't outdo them. I shouldn't have things better than they have. So I brilliantly resist reaching this goal. I love and appreciate those parts of me that have been resisting reaching these goals based on the belief that I need that to protect me. And now I'm processing those fears. All these fears of the consequences. All these fears that I couldn't handle reaching this goal. All these fears that I don't have what it takes. I'm clearing those fears at a cellular level. clearing them all the way back through my past. Back through all the times in my life that I somehow got the message that I couldn't have this. That I shouldn't have this. Those are misunderstandings. The truth is I'm a magnificent child of the universe. <laughs> Worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. And I've got what it takes to do what it takes. So I'm clearing that resistance. Releasing it from every fiber of my being. So that when I think about this goal, I feel really good about it. I know I'm worthy and deserving of it. I know, I know that I'm just the sort of person to have this. And I'm loving myself in the process. In body, mind, and spirit. And take a deep breath. Close your eyes, go inside, and think about about that goal again, imagining that you've achieved this goal, that you have these things, these circumstances, and say, it's safe for me to have this. It's okay for me to have this. I deserve this. And hopefully that feels a lot better. That feels more true. And again, like peeling layers of the onion, there may have been memories that came up, different thoughts that came up, or different sensations that came up 
And you can address those more specifically with tapping and keep clearing away that stuff that uh, gets in the way. Gosh, that was awesome. That was awesome. I needed that today. That was like the perfect one for me. I was like halfway through going like, yes, yes, I needed this. Um, <laughs> definitely some resistance about me and me and the podcast, you know, and trying to move things forward. So this is good. This is good. Excellent. Awesome, Brad. My goodness. What a pleasure to be able to interview, but also tap with you. Dream come true here for sure. <laughs> Loving it. So of course we got to tell yeah. folks like, how can they get a hold of the five day free program tapping into your best self and then also following you on YouTube tapping with Brad? I'll let you speak. I'll let you give the spiel versus me. <laughs> Thanks. <Jenny. laughs> uh, yeah. Easiest way is to go to tapwithbrad.com. And on my website, you'll see the, uh, the opportunity to get that free five day program tap into your best self uh, or another five day program that I have called success beyond belief. So uh, all kinds of great resources there to help you start tapping and clearing away that resistance and, and recognizing how awesome you are and how awesome a life you deserve. And then, yeah, I have well over a thousand videos on YouTube on all kinds of different subjects, whatever's coming up for you, there's probably a tap for that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, please, please use it in good health and allow yourself to feel better about yourself and then you're able to do things better and create a better life. And that's good for you and countless others. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> I love that you always mention the benefit for others by, by folks working on their tapping in their energy. And of course, it's just such a big deal for us to be thinking about the impact of how we impact the other, the folks around us and our yeah. environment. We, we are gifts to the world. And uh, so that's why one of the job titles I gave myself is gift unwrapper. <laughs> <laughs> it's unraveling it's just like michelangelo with the david the david is a gift to us it's just a magnificent piece of art michelangelo unwrapped it so helping people unwrap the gift and sharing it and you know if we make the world a better place that's good for us we can't sit there and just take care of ourselves and hope that the world will somehow help us out <laughs> No, we need to make the world a better place. Absolutely. Absolutely. One, one tapping session at a time is how I will throw it in yep. there. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Making the world a better place one tap at a time. You got it. My goodness. Thank you so much, Brad, for coming on and sharing all of your knowledge with us. I sincerely appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Janine. I appreciate the opportunity. It's great to meet you. And thank you to everyone who's been willing to tap along with us. Absolutely. Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.